Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Today we are making this gorgeous scraptastic confetti bed runner using up all your scrap yarn. If English isn't your first language, you can click on this gear on the video and scroll through to find your preferred dialect. And this easy to follow step-by-step -step crochet tutorial is available in both right and left-handed, so please check the description box below to find the version that suits you best. This is a great project for using up small bits of yarn, two or three feet, and also for busting through full skeins of yarn that you have too many of or that you aren't in love with, you will be once they're combined into this stellar scrap yarn blanket. Plus, the only tails we have to sew in are the ones at the beginning and the end. The whole way through, we are doing magic knots and hiding them in the center of our stitches. You will love it. And we're also tripling up our main yarn, so I'll be sharing my tips and tricks for turning any thin yarn into a chunky yarn in a snap. And again, no ends. You can use random scraps like I did, or select colors that match your decor. For my twin size scraptastic confetti bed runner, I used 250 grams of four weight worsted acrylic scraps, plus 10 full skeins of extra yarn I had laying around. The finish size of mine is 28 inches by 68 inches. But of course, you could make yours into a full blanket or to fit any bed. The starting chains are included in the written pattern, which is linked below. I am using a 12 millimeter crochet hook. You'll also need a pair of scissors and a needle for sewing in your ends. Here are the timestamps. You can jump back into where you left off and let's get started. To start making Graptastic Confetti Bed Runner, gather up all of your scraps and we're going to be joining them together using a magic knot and then just balling them up or caking them, whatever you want to do. But we want to get all of our yarn, all of our scraps joined together before we start. To join with a magic knot, get your tails. We want to lay them out parallel, facing opposite directions. So one facing this way, one facing that way. We're just going to grab the first one and just lay it over the other yarn and tuck it underneath. It makes a little loop. And now we're going to knot this tail. Just a regular knot, just like that, around the other tail. Give it a pull. This works really great for acrylic. If you are using a slippery yarn or a cotton, be careful because you can't really pull it that tight without it breaking, snapping, or sliding off. So really good with acrylic. And now do the same thing. Put your other tail around the other yarn. Put it underneath and make a knot, just a regular single knot, just like that. Tighten it Now pull both yarns and now pull each tail. Pull again and now you are ready. Just pull it again to make sure it is secure. And now we're ready to cut off our tails and we can cut those off right at the knot. So just slide your scissors down until they touch the knot and cut off that tail. Pull it again to make sure it's nice and strong. And there is your magic knot. So now go ahead and join all the rest of your yarn and roll it up or cake it up. So to triple up our main yarn, just lay your tail out right here. And we wanna be making an S shape. Like that, so an S shape and also grab your scrap yarn and lay that beside. Just like that, so we have our four strands. Now pinch those tails, and we're gonna be doing a slip knot with all of four strands. So however you do a slip knot, just do the same thing with all four strands. So our tails are our tails, and our working yarn is our working yarn, but we also have this little loop. So with the loop, we're gonna put our fingers through just so we can pinch, grab your main yarn, the same color, or your main yarn from your ball of yarn, and pull a loop through a bigger loop. So a big loop through the small loop, 
and pop all that onto your hook. Make sure you have four strands. We do have to keep track of our strands for this pattern. Shrink that down, and now we're ready to start our Scraptastic Confetti Bed Runner. So we're doing any multiple of four. So you can go ahead and just chain sets of four. If you want yours to be the exact size of mine, I chained 136. So sets of four. One, two, three, four. You can pause the video and get your chain done. One, two, three, four. Just like that. So pause the video, keep working along, doing sets of four or chaining 136, and I will meet you back when your chain is done. If you want to follow along with the written pattern, all of my patterns are available on my website, secretyourownrate.com, and you don't have to worry about being able to read a pattern. All of my patterns are written in plain English, just like I was sitting there right beside you. And as you are working along, whenever you get to a small loop when you've used up your extra, just poke your fingers in, grab that same yarn, and make a bigger loop. And then keep crocheting. Don't worry about where that join is. You don't even see it in our work. So pause the video and I will meet you when your chain is done. For this tutorial, I'm just doing a shorter sample, so your chain will be a bit longer than mine. But when your chain is the length you want it to be, go ahead and chain three more. One, two, and three. Now we're going to be working into the second chain, but we want to roll our chain onto the side, and we want to be working into the back loops or those camel bumps along the back of your chain. So the first Camel bump for the first back loop is right underneath our working yarn, and the second one is right here. So we want to be going in, getting those four strands on our hook. So slide those four strands onto your hook and make one single crochet. And into the next chain, the next back loops right here, we are also going to be doing one single crochet. So just slide those back loops onto your hook and one single crochet. Chain two, one and two. Skip two, one and two. We're going to go into the third. Remember, we're working into our back loops. So one, two, working into the third right there. One single crochet. Remember, whenever you get to your loop, just grab more yarn straight through it. Now into the next stitch, one single crochet. Just making sure you get all four of those loops or strands on your hook. Chain two, one and two, skipping two, one and two, and into the third, one single crochet. And into the next chain, one single crochet. So we're just doing these little spaces all the way along. So chain two, skip two, Skipping the two, going into the third. We're going to do one single crochet into two chains. So everything for this row is twos. Two, this is our second single crochet. Chain two, one and two. Skipping two, one and two. And one single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So pause the video and keep working along. Two single crochets, chain two, skip two. All the way along, I'll meet you at the end of your chain. At the end of your chain, you'll have your four chains left. So we're still going to skip two and do two single crochets into the last two chains. So into the second last chain, one single crochet, and into the last chain. It's a bit fiddly. 
one single crochet. So that finishes row one. Now to start row two, we're gonna start with a chain three. One, two, three, and turn your work. Our chain counts as our first stitch. So now we're gonna work right into the second stitch, which is right here and we're gonna make one double crochet. Chain two, one, and two, and into the stitches. So we're skipping these spaces, we don't do anything in the spaces, we're just working stitches into stitches. So into each of these stitches, we are doing a double crochet. So one double crochet into each. There is one, and remember, whenever you get back to your loop, just grab more yarn and pull it through. And then one double crochet into the next stitch. So we're just doing pairs. There are two double crochets, chain two, one and two, and going straight over to our stitches so one double crochet into the first stitch. And one double crochet into the second stitch. Chain two, one and two. And we're just gonna keep doing that all the way along. For the jail cell row, we're making these nice big cells right here. So double crochets into the stitches. One double crochet into each. Chaining two, one and two, and skipping straight over to your next stitches. So you can pause the video and keep working along. I'll also be showing you, see this little magic knot right there? I'll show you how to hide it. The next time we get to a magic knot, I will show you a trick so that yours doesn't look like that. This is just a sample, but for your real blanket, we'll be keeping an eye on those magic knots. So pause the video and I'll meet you at the end of this row. Now when you get to a magic knot and you wanna hide it, there's a little pro tip here, you can pull it before you start that stitch you can get ready to start it. I guess before you pull that last bit through, go ahead and pull just that strand. You want some tension on the scrap yarn strand. So pull that one tighter than the rest as you're crocheting it. And it sits right inside all of that scrap yarn so we can't see it anymore. So you just give it a little pull keep it a bit snug, and it hides that yarn, that knot, straight inside the stitch. So that's how you can hide all of your magic knots inside your stitches. Just give some tension, pull that scrap yarn as you're doing that stitch, as you're working around that magic knot, and it'll hide straight inside the stitch. At the end of our row, we have our stitch and this lump on the side. The lump on the side, see that guy here? That is the last stitch of the row. So we're gonna double crochet where we think we should into that first stitch. And also into this guy here on the hill. That is our last stitch. So we're always ending and st we're always starting and ending with two. So make sure you end with two double crochets. And that finishes row two, the plate row. To start row three, we're gonna be making cakes. So we're gonna be alternating cakes and plates. So we're gonna start with a chain one and turn your work. And we're gonna go in to the first two stitches. So single crochet and single crochet. So our chain one doesn't count as a stitch. We're gonna make a single crochet into that first stitch and make a single crochet into the second stitch. Just like that. Chaining two, one and two. 
and skipping over to our first real stitches, right there, one single crochet into each. So the bigger you make your bed runner, the easier it is because you can see where you're going. We're always working into stitches. We're making little columns right on top of each other, stacking. So chain two, one and two, and into the stitches, one single crochet into each. One, and two. Chaining two, one and two, and one single crochet into each stitch. So we're skipping over those chain spaces. The spaces, we don't do anything, but the stitches get stitches, just like that. So you can pause the video, keep working along, doing a chain two and two single crochets into the stitch all the way along, and I'll meet you when we get to the end of your row. At the end of your row, we have our two stitches left. Well, one is a chain, and the chain counts for double crochets. The chain counts as your last stitch. So one single crochet into the last stitch and one single crochet into your chain, always ending with two, starting and ending with twos. And that finishes the cakes row. Now to make your scraptastic confetti bed runner the size you want it to be, you're just gonna keep going, alternating making a cake row and a plate row and a cake row and a plate row all the way along until you have finished up all your scrap yarn or your bed runner is the size you want it to be. Plus, you always want to be ending on a plate row. So pause the video and I will meet you when you've used up all your scrap yarn or your bed runner is the height you want it to be. When your bed runner is the height you want it to be or you've used up your scrap yarn, chain one. We're just gonna finish off like normal. So we wanna secure our yarn with that chain one and then cut your yarn, all of those tails pull your hook up and your yarn through and snug that down to secure. And now sew in these tails. If you have a loop right there like I do, just cut that loop because we want to sew those in individually. So there's four tails we have to sew in, in at the end and also we're gonna do the same thing at the beginning. We're gonna cut that loop, our starting loop, and sew in all four of these tails. And now you're finished. So I hope you liked this tutorial as much as I did. I'm waiting for you in that video right there and stay hooked.